All right guys, what is going on? Lux here from the MD Journey, helping you succeed on your journey with less stress. Today's video, I wanna share with you something that people will tell me all the time that wasn't true at all. They'll say something along the lines of, dude, you are a machine. And I would say, no, 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 no. In fact, I sleep a lot, I sleep often, and I sleep purposefully. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how and why you should get more rest throughout the day. We're going to be talking about the perfect power nap. Now first, let's talk about the science behind an effective power nap and why they work so well. Now over a day, our body accumulates a neurotransmitter in our brains known as adenosine. Now adenosine's natural function in our brain is to slow everything down. It's basically our body's reminder of saying, hey, get some rest, get some sleep. But as students, we don't always have that luxury. We come home in the late afternoons and we still have to study, prepare for exams, take notes, and a lot more goes into it. But we're often tired at these late afternoon sessions. These 2 to 4 p.m. is where our bodies naturally start to slow down and where we feel least motivated to get some work done. That's where the power nap comes in. It's basically 10 to 30 minutes of rest that you can give yourselves to basically wash out some of that adenosine that you've accumulated throughout the day and wake up feeling more rested. Now science shows that in addition to feeling more alert, you're also more productive and your cognitive function increases. So obviously we should take power naps whenever possible, but as students, we need that little bit of oomph. You know, how can I get some more energy to make it through a late night study session, preparing for an exam or a final that's coming up? That's why I love to use coffee power naps. I've used them throughout four years of medical school and they work so well. Now it basically goes down to three simple steps. Step one, make some coffee. Step two, drink your coffee. Step three, take a power nap. Now the reason that this works so well is that one, we know that sleep takes away adenosine in our bodies. Now caffeine and adenosine both bind to the same receptor. Adenosine slows your body down, caffeine stops adenosine from working, thus makes your body feel more alert, which is why shortly after drinking a soda, coffee, or tea, we feel a little bit more hyped. So after taking a nap and taking some of that adenosine away, we give the caffeine in our systems to use more receptors and make us feel more alert. So the sleep is working, the coffee is working, and we have a better nap in just 10 to 30 minutes in a day. And there's not much more to it. But after using coffee naps for the last four years, I want to give you some tips, some takeaways that will make it so much more effective. Now tip number one, for any of you that are out there saying naps don't work for me and I'm always groggy afterwards, my first tip is to make sure that you don't nap longer than 30 minutes. Now our sleep cycle is broken down into four main sleep phases. And the first two are where a power nap happens and after 30 minutes we start to go into deeper forms of sleep where we hit a concept called sleep inertia. This is where you know that phenomenon where we wake up and we've gotten a lot of rest yet we're more tired than we were before we went to bed. So keeping your sleep between anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes will allow you to have the best mixture of feeling well rested without getting groggy when you're waking up. So keep it below 30 minutes. And that goes into tip number two, which is to use smartphone apps. My favorite one being Alarmy because I can set it to 20 to 25 minutes and it's so obnoxiously loud that I'm definitely waking up before I hit that sleep inertia phase. Tip number three is to make your coffee very quickly versus waiting for it to brew. I love using my AeroPress because it literally takes me anywhere from two to five minutes to make a great cup of coffee. You don't have to use coffee, obviously. You can use something like tea. Just know that your caffeine amount won't be as high. That goes into the final few tips. Tip number four being sleeping near light versus sleeping under your covers. You just want it to make it as easy as possible for you to wake up when that loud alarm goes off. And the final two tips. Number five is about having one easy yet important tasks that you can do right after your power nap. You want to have something that you can go right into versus like not having anything on your to-do list because then it's going to become very easy for you to continue sleeping. So I would pick something as flashcards. For me, those were low barrier. You may be doing something like reading your syllabus um, or doing some practice questions. Find your favorite study method that you can easily jump into without much effort. And finally, avoid doing the coffee power nap after 
5 to 6 p.m. to still give your body enough time to wash out that caffeine out of your system and have a natural sleep cycle. That's basically it for this video, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you're interested in trying out a coffee nap. Even if you tried it before, try it out with some of the tips that we mentioned in this video and let me know the results down below just by commenting. And I'm curious, you know, since you've made it to this video, have you tried at least a power nap before? And two, have you tried a coffee nap and what have been your results? I'd love to hear what you guys think. And if you guys have more suggestions for future videos, also drop it down below in the comments. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and join the community. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care, my friends.